welcome back to the shed. So we're carrying on with the old Bonneville, America into a Bonneville um, project. And uh, the two things, um, I'm not sure which video is going to be coming out first. Uh, depends how I get on with filming these. Um, the two things I want to have a look at uh, in order of priority is fitting a front wheel onto a T100, uh, an America front wheel onto the T100. See if that is going to fit. Or am I going to need to do, um, actually have the yokes um, and the C100 steering stem to fit the front end of the America on the Bonneville? I'm just going to have to kind of, that, that, that's one thing I want to do. But um, the other thing I want to do as well is work out the tank. Um, that's slightly pressing as well. Uh, so I am in the fortunate position of having four... Bonneville tanks at my disposal. Um, I say four. One of them is a uh, fuel injected one, the other three are carbs. But um, these are the tanks. Fuel injected red back tank. What I like to call the old prey for me pinstripe tank. Mr. Moody black tank. And of course the bare metal tank, which is uh, the tank of choice at the moment on the America. So out of those, um, obviously only the three carb ones um, are the ones that I'll be looking at and that is the black one, the uh, Pray For Me black and white pinstripe one and the bare metal one. Um, so the black one is stock that hasn't been molested other than me give it a matte black paint job and fill in a couple of dents on it. The uh, black and white with the gold pinstripe, that was the tank I used first of all to, to try and retrofit it to an America. So you're going to see uh, how uh, the difference in the mounting points on those and what I've done to butcher those up. The, um, yeah, the black and white one was the first one I had to go at. I think I refined the process a little bit more with the bare metal one. So I'll, just, I'll show you the mounting tabs as they are on those tanks at the moment. Black fuel tank with this mounting arrangement. It's totally stock. Um, seat latch comes in under there. So you've got this little bit there where the seat holds the seat in. That's the standard one, black one. Fuel tanks, obviously we've got this slightly larger EFI fuel tank for the hard tail. Um, that's still as stock. Still got that because obviously I'm going to have to work out. I did wonder about trying to remove this and then just regrafting it back onto the other tank, but I think that's going to end up being more hassle than it's worth. Um, but this tank is obviously staying with this bike because this is the only fuel injected out of the three that we've got. So that's obviously got the big recess underneath the fuel pump. So that is almost out of the equation. Yes. The other Bonneville. So this is the tank that I was using, but Jim would like it. So that's going on there. Um, I've already started by cleaning up um, where I'd kind of bodged it before. Um, so we're going to chop this down and then try, hopefully, and make a different way of mounting this onto here. And that's the... Uh, you see like the tab that needs to locate if you want to hold your stock seat on, which I think I'm going to in both of these uh, instances, definitely obviously on this one and probably on the one upstairs. I think I'm going to modify a stock seat. Um, so I've just got to make this work. I think the easiest way is going to be, um, so I'll probably chop this down, get rid of this different metal we'd put on um, and then just do a little piece that sits there, bolts on there, and then I'll just do a bit of metal that then bolts over the top with a gap to hold that tongue in there. I think that's going to be the easiest way of doing that in theory. And we can see how this one, how remember from previous videos, I modified that one to work with an America mounting point. So that will have to be re looked at um, if I want to try and get it to mount back on a Bonneville. And then to bring it up to speed, so 
Originally, I thought I've only got the black and white one and the bare metal one to play with, so I was going to have to modify them to refit back on a Bonneville. Um, but Jen's keen on having the black and white one with the gold pinstriping on hers. So what I need to do is... I've got a couple of options open. She wants that tank, so if I can make the black and white tank reconfigure that and I can be, I, I, I don't mind getting quite cutting and involved into the bottom of that tank um, because I didn't like the way I executed it for putting it on the America. So that one I'm quite happy to chop into and try and make it fit on her bike and if I can do that that's great. That will go on her bike, I'll have the black tank and then I've got a bit of time because I think I really like to use the bare metal tank. But what I don't want to do is lob off the um, uh, mounting point that I've got on there just in case I none of this works out or I change my mind and I want to stick with the America. That's, that is still going on. I want to do a lot of stuff that is the only thing, only hardship to me would be time in the shed, spannering and changing stuff over, um, physical nuts and bolts. I, I want everything to be reversible or mix them between the two. Just plain, it's safe if you like. Um, so, with that in mind, so I'd like the bare metal one on my project ideally. I'd like the black and white one on Jen's bike ideally and so she would she. If I can't get that to fit then she'll have to have the black one and I'll have to figure something out. If I can get it to fit I can either use the black one and then maybe work out how to fit the bare metal. Um, so, I need to start off by I'm going to attack the uh, and I use the word attack the black and white uh, tank first because if I can make that fit hers then that kind of dictates how the rest of this is going to go. So let's get cracking. So my plan is uh, if we draw a Bonneville tank. So what I think I'm going to try and do is kind of do a piece that's going to sit like this on there. Um, so if I, uh, let's see, that's the bottom, of the bottom of the tank, that edge bit will get a bit welded on there and it will sit there. So that's kind of the extra bit we're going to do and that will screw onto the mounting bit of the frame there like that rubber bush underneath it. Um, if we were looking down on it, it might look something like that, you know, probably a bit neater. Um, obviously we need this tongue thing to go in here uh, for the seat to catch into, um, or about here. So what I'll probably do there is, <laughs> this is probably not making it <laughs> any clearer at all. So that's this is the bottom of the bracket I've made and we'll have a hole there um, I'll probably make some sort of spacer here a little round spacer like that shit drawing again in but um, and then have a little plate across the top like that and then that will just get in another space there obviously on that side so it'll be underneath that and then that will give us a little tongue will sit under there possibly that probably makes absolutely no sense but um, that's that's what's in my head that I've quite badly shown you there so let's have another little close-up so you can see uh, that was where I had an old hole that was quite bad and filled that in and then I wanted to move where the tank was so this little extra bit was put in so this is kind of all new I think we're gonna chop it back to about here just get some nice clean fresh unmolested metal um, look underneath this doesn't get much prettier and in fact yeah, if we come up to about there and chop where these spots are, that's going to give us. Where are we? 
we? About there. About there. So enough meat before we get into the actual gas tank on this to try and uh, work out a bracket. So I think I'm going to cut off what I don't need because this is too much here at the moment anyway to fit properly. Get this nice and clean to a point where it's ready to have a bracket made up for it. And then uh, have a look what we've got to make the bracket. So just looking at possible options here, uh, one is to clean the bike obviously, uh, the other one is, um, I mean, I could just drill a hole through here, make a sort of standoff, uh, have the wiring pushed just to one side, but have a little standoff here and a captive nut drilled into the spine of the tank and just boom, straight away bolt it on and then just maybe a little piece of metal across here just to hold the seat on. So that'd be quite quick and easy, but um, I would like to try and do it um, using the existing kind of stock mounting arrangement as close as I can. Um, I was also thinking about maybe just doing another little tab. This is just an aluminium bracket, uh, but just to give an idea, putting a tab on like that. Again, a very similar arrangement to what I'd had before, but again, that is just pretty much the standoff kind of set up there. Um, so I think we're going to try and um, make a little bracket first. Right, so this is where we're at so far. So obviously I've given myself a fair bit of meat just to uh, have a play around with and then just to kind of work out a few bits and bobs. So we've got the, the wiring loom uh, comes through here. So I think, I whereas I originally thought I was going to have that flat on the, the base here and then some standoffs 
I might actually reverse that and have some standoffs and then have this as the top part of the bracket so then it clears it'll sort of bolt in here now it'll clear over and uh, go up over there um, so it'll clear the loom rather sorry um, so I've just got to make some measurements and work out a bend so if we were looking at it so it would sit like that then have a little bend up into the uh, tank here So, mock up number two, I just, just went and uh, got some uh, old seat rubbers um, and I think they're actually old paddock stand bobbins. It was just really to get the height on there. Um, I've just pressed, see in there, inside there, some little sleeves as well. But that seems to actually, do you know, I might not even do anything else that, you know, does the job. I think that works. Let's just have a little look with the tank on. Um, check that, uh, and then work out what we need to do any more bending here, or um, and how short we want to cut it off. So that's as it just rests. I do want to. Maybe we could just have a slight lift. Try and get the bottom of that tank a bit flatter, maybe. Looks like the seal. I can't push it up too much because it's going to start. Well, I've got a little bit of give there. Here we go, moment of truth. Let's see if I uh, can try not to cock this up. Okay, so not super pretty at all. Um, I will grind and file that down so it looks a bit neater. Um, still not confident enough in my welding to do a continuous speed. I seem to just I was just going to spot weld and then I just did around the edges there. Um, but I just almost spot welded it continuously just because um, yeah, I don't uh, my welding's not good enough. So I might just flip it over now as well. I might try and just run a bead along the underside there just to fill that in so we'll see if I cock it all up at this point so then look I've got some better penetration there um, could probably done with a bit more on that side but I just keep getting really nervous about blowing through because this is pretty thin so um, this is my next bit I'm going to try and do a bit across here and uh, well, see if Palmer just wants to leave it um, I need to try and flatten that a little bit more so it follows the flat of this so it looks a bit neater though first but uh, yeah, I'm really in two minds should I do it or should I leave it as is horrific but uh, it's on so um, 
I'm going to try and clean these up the best I can. And um, but it does all feel very solid on there. So uh, fingers crossed that's done the job. It's a little bit of uh, flap disc and grinding action. Um, yeah, it's still not exactly what you would call pleasant to look at. Um, I could possibly just keep grinding. I've left quite a lip on this side. It's quite, it's quite hard to get into actually. I've tried the older uh, file and Dremel, but um, I'll keep working at it. I think. Um, show the other side. So uh, yeah, <laughs> um, it's not going to win any beauty contests. I'm in two minds. I mean, I hate the term, no one will see it, so blah, blah, blah. I think, I hate that term. Uh, I think you should always, uh, even if they're never ever going to get seen, I like to try and make it as perfect as possible. Um, I'm in a bit of a conundrum for myself. This is obviously all just going to get painted black. Um, you don't, you don't see any of this. This is all hidden under the seat, and I'll just follow the line that I did before, and just have, you know, just paint that all black, just to have it uh, protected. Um, I could just run a smear of filler across there, and literally instantly, you aren't going to see any of the bumps and bumbles and that's going to be nice and smooth but it just feels like I'm cheating doing that and I, I don't know I just I've, I'm just not keen on putting filler in I think it's just a bit of a a cop out but um, not sure not sure I mean on the plus side there was no movement on that bracket at all no flex even um, so I'm pretty confident that it's on and not coming off um, but I'm going to have to have a little think with what my conscience will let me get away with or whether if I'm being a little bit too um, finicky so I've done a little bit more grinding and uh, it's probably about as good as I'm going to get on there question is do I just run almost a thumbful of uh, filler over that just to make it look super tidy I think I will you know I don't like to but my welding isn't good enough to have um, the welds looking nice on display um, so you know it's getting painted so I think yeah a little little just a little smear of filler over that just to clean it you know, make it look, get rid of these caverns, craters, <laughs> and um, I think we're good to go. Get some tape on here and uh, start painting it. So I think we'll call that done for this video. Um, so that one's on here now. Um, and although this isn't sort of technically for this Bonneville, it was necessary to get this done so we could uh, have a play with it. Well, see which tanks were going to be used. So uh, let's see with the seat on as well. Happy days. So I'll just finish up this video then. Stood next to my new sign from uh, Old Man Tony Vlogs. Thanks Tony, a nice hand carved, beautifully hand carved wooden sign which now has pride of place on the wall. Um, so 
That is um, that is the tank, the black and white tank mounted, uh, and that's going to stay on there. So now I need to just see if I can f make something up to fit the bare metal tank. And I don't want to make any modifications to that tank that's going to involve um, cutting or welding, purely because it's all powder coated. Um, I don't have to refinish anything as it is, so I want to try it and just fix it as it is. So that's something I'll look at on the next run. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is I've got the fuel tap all together and I've filmed all that. I'm probably going to do a separate fuel tap video next, um, which will just have a bit of an edited bit of the last video, which was the disassembly, the reassembly, and then we'll see if uh, it's actually the new O-ring set has done anything. Um, yeah, I just went out. Hopefully, going to get around to that this weekend, so I'll just finish filming that up. So that might be a nice little standalone video next, possibly. And then following on from that, um, I think the next step, uh, I'm going to have a look at the tank, going to do the fuel tap. We need to see if uh, what what I'm going to use on the front end. Am I going to use the America wheel, the America forks? and somehow try and get the T100 Bonneville yokes or am I going to have to press the stem out of the Bonneville yokes and use the whole America front end, don't know yet. That's what we'll explore next time. So thanks for watching, take it easy, see you soon.